Right, hello, and uh, welcome to uh, the relaunch of developer hours. Um, so we're three minutes past, I guess we can make a start. I guess people will join as and when. Um, yeah, developer hours sort of initial trial happened last year, originally facilitated by uh, Birgit Pauliak. Um, and this is a kind of relaunch of it. And this is the first one. Um, this first one is, uh, we're gonna do the developer hours targeted at different audiences. You know, sometimes it'd be core developers, sometimes it'll be theme developers. And for this one, it's plugin developers. And this session has a special focus on adding block functionality to an existing plugin that might have a short code or a widget to render content. And you might want to add a, a, a block to render content in a block in that plugin without losing your short code or widget functionality. So this uh, session is basically about that for us to just talk about. Sorry, there's some other people joining. Let me just admit them. Okay, just welcome the uh, the new joiners that I've just admitted to the room. I'm just explaining that this session is targeted at plugin developers and is going to be about adding block functionality to an existing plugin that renders content using a, a short code or a widget and to add block functionality without losing your or replacing the short code or widget functionality. So just want to remind people that this session is being recorded and it will be uploaded to WordPress TV and YouTube. Um, we're likely to refer to the block editor handbook throughout this session. So it might be useful for you to have that available. So I'm just going to pop that in the chat so that you can uh, load it up and have it for reference. Um, and at this point, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Ryan Welcher. Um, Ryan's a very experienced uh, web developer. He used to work for at TenUp, uh, now works for Automatic. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, Ryan? Sure. I'm Ryan Melcher. I uh, used to work at 10 Up, and now I work at Automatic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I've been a developer for about 18 years, 19 years. I don't know. Too long to want to put into a number. It makes me feel old. Um, yeah, and uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I've been doing a lot with blocks. I stream weekly, usually on block development stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else, what else there is to say about me um, other than that. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's Ryan's extremely experienced working with blocks and React and so on. So he'll be a, a valuable asset in this discussion. Uh, as he mentioned, he does a, a weekly Twitch stream, and he also uploads uh, his the recordings from the Twitch stream to YouTube. Do you want to post your a link to your YouTube channel in the, the chat, Ryan? Sure. Awesome. So worth uh, worth heading over to Ryan's YouTube channel. Uh, lots of useful info there, and you can watch him coding in real time. Okay. Uh, as for myself, I've uh, I was long time freelance web developer working for clients, um, and then I worked for Frontity. And I now work for Automatic as well. Ryan and I are colleagues. We work together on the same team. Um, so let me explain what we want, what we want to get out of the session and what we think we can offer you. Uh, the main thing we want to do is learn about your experience of working with blocks, you know, what pain points you've encountered, what hurdles you've encountered, how you overcame them, if you overcame them. Or, or what you got stuck on. Um, 
and that's with a view that we can update the documentation and provide other resources that will help you and block developers that come after you uh, in the learning process uh, to help them on their way. So, you know, you know, what did you get stuck on? Like missing documentation? Were there tutorials or other resources that you felt were missing that we could uh, provide? You know, and then we're also here to answer any questions you might have and help you or guide you to the resources that you may not have found uh, to help you overcome any of the problems that you encountered. Um, so if you have any questions, put them in the chat or raise your hand. Do we have the, do we have that function? That, oh yes, we've got the reactions functionality. So yeah, you can raise your hand if you want to ask a question and, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll cover all the questions. This is gonna be more of a free form discussion. It's not really a panel. Uh, there's only me and Ryan as hosts. So I'm not really considering it a panel. I'm hoping everyone can chime in with their own experiences. And, um, you know, and outline the pain points and problems that you've encountered along the way and what you think could help you. Um, and also, you know, if you've got some experience and are fairly knowledgeable, then chime in with uh, with answers to people's problems as well. Like I said, it's not a panel, it's a conversation. So feel free to unmute and to uh, turn on your video so we can all see each other and basically have a conversation. So it'd be awesome to, to be able to see people. Okay, but before we get stuck in, let me just go through a few announcements. So uh, Word, WordPress 6.2 beta one launches tomorrow. Um, I'll just post a link to that for you in the chat for the timeline for WordPress 6.2. So beta one is out tomorrow, betas two, three, and four are out on successive Tuesday over each week in February. Um, and then the final launch date is in the link I've sent you. I can't remember off the top of my head and I don't have that page open right at the moment. Gutenberg 15.1 is out on Wednesday and can be, uh, there, here's the Gutenberg repo in case you need it. Uh, if you want to track issues and PRs that will be in the 15.1 release. WordCamp Asia is next weekend. It's the very first WordCamp Asia, and I believe Ryan's going to be there. Are you speaking? I am not speaking. I will You're be helping with Contributor Day. I believe Birgit Polyhack, um, another one of our esteemed colleagues, will will be speaking. Um, Nick, are you going, Nicholas? No? Unfortunately not, but no. I wish I was. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was going? as well. <laughs> Sorry? I'm I wish I was as well. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Is anybody else going to WordCamp Asia? No. Probably get a lot more in the in the the, the AMEA version of this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a bit of, it's a bit of a flight for us over in uh, North yeah. North America. So yeah, so as I said, Start that's the very America. first WordCamp Asia, mm -hmm. and that's happening not this weekend, the following weekend. Yeah, um, I think it's sold out. So if you haven't already got your tickets, I don't think there's a, you're going to be able to get one now. Uh, the other two big WordCamps, WordCamp Europe is the 8th to the 10th of June tickets. And I think speaker applications are still open for that. And WordCamp US is the 24th to the 26th of August. And that's a bit earlier than in previous years. I think it's traditionally been in October. Yeah, um, I think so. Usually yeah. at the end. So I think it's been scheduled a bit earlier this year. I'm not quite sure what the reason for that is. Um, then there's other word camps, smaller word camps. Um, most of the ones scheduled so far are happening in Europe. There's a few uh, for in the US. And then there's word camp Entebbe in Africa. That's Ethiopia. Is that in the Ethiopia? Entebbe? Uganda, I believe. Uganda, Uganda. You're right, you're together. And there's one in Kerala, India. Uh, so if you head over to wordcamp.org, you can get a full list of uh, 
of all the upcoming word camps um, to see if there's one near you or as I said there's the flagship ones Asia Europe and US all scheduled has anybody got any any other announcements anything else they want to announce not for me no. okay great um Okay, how many people have we got? We have exactly 12. Uh, I don't know, should we go around the room and introduce ourselves just briefly? Tell us what your background is, if you don't mind. And then we'll head on into uh, questions. Who should we start with? Let's start with Gerald in the, I'll just go across my screen in order. So if you could unmute. I'm Gerald Pegney. Uh, I'm in Arvada, Colorado, and I have been working with WordPress now for four years, uh, but I've been a programmer for over 36 before I retired, so I'm not new to software. And I'm building a genealogy site, and I'm working on a couple of uh, e-commerce sites. And have you actually attempted to build any blocks yet or migrate a plugin to blocks? I have not done that. I'm just thinking about what I want to go, where I want to go with that. So I thought this would be a good place just to listen and learn. Cool, cool. Uh, okay, next on my screen is Jean P or Jean P. Um, hi, um, I'm fairly new to WordPress. I started taking classes last year and I started doing a plugin, but I never finished it. And then I got very enamored in the blocks and full site editing and been taking a lot of WordPress meetups. And then when this comment came up, I said, oh, maybe I'll just go back to my plugin project. So I'm mostly here to listen also. And I've really enjoyed Nick's and Ryan's presentations over the the past year so thank you guys thank you yeah. so nick would you like to just introduce yourself sure um i am a developer advocate at wp engine um doing a lot of education around wordpress um i also build my own, i have built my own plugins built blocks so i think that this topic is really interesting because there's a lot of plugins out there that were built geared towards classic audience and now they want to transition that functionality to blocks and I think that that's what a lot of plugin developers are facing these days um so happy to be part of the conversation yep I agree with that so hence this session or series of sessions I should mention there's three of these sessions scheduled about a month apart at different times to cater for different time zones this is actually the EMEA one so it's uh nice to see uh some people from uh the Americas joining in. Uh, Christopher Busutil is next on my screen. Hello, everyone. Christopher here. So we've been working with WordPress for six, seven years, um, but our, our code is a lot legacy and a lot focused on the native. We started recently really focused to start using the blocks, so converted to blocks a couple of sites. Now using that, now it's the time to, to start building our own. We're also finding a few troubles to customize the, the, the backend as well. So style sheets are, are not really that easy for us to work with, but maybe due to the large amount of legacy code we have on our WordPress sites. So very, very, very eager to learn more to avoid some mistakes we're doing. Thank you, guys. Okay, cool. Let's see how we can help you with the troubles you're encountering. Where, where are you joining us from? Oh, sorry. I'm from Malta, Europe. Malta. Malta, correct. Great. It's on, on my bucket list to visit Malta. I still haven't been there. <laughs> Stuart, hi. Where are you? Tell us about yourself. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon to all. Um, a few people I know in here. Um, I'm in the UK. I think you are, are you? I'm in the UK, yes. Yeah, sound very British. Um, yes, very, okay, very so sunny I'm here today, um, unusually. <laughs> Um, I'm in the UK. Um, why am I here? Um, been doing a lot of WordPress development websites predominantly and very keen to uh, find the time, to be honest. If you just start building out some uh, block plugin ideas and I'm struggling with the time, to be honest with you, because uh, I have customers and bills to pay. But um, 
I do tune into Ryan's calls. I've pretty much followed much of what Nick's been up to and um, hence the interest in joining today. But I think my capacity today will be more listening than uh, than bringing value to the table, if I'm honest, because that's where I'm at uh, in terms of, you know, um, I guess my effort. But uh, but I, I look forward to being able to participate at a greater level over time uh, and, and, and indeed finding the time to move away from predominantly websites and and starting to to get more involved of obviously from a block uh, I see the whole future as blocks anyway so I'm very excited by it I've, I've been putting a lot of personal work into it uh, sites I'm starting to develop for end users now based on blocks so uh, yeah it's some interesting stuff going on out there and I and I've got my uh, uh, foot to the metal I guess is what I'm going to say so I leave it like that and um, and uh, wish everybody well in the call today hey, thank awesome. you thank you. Andrew Slay, you're next on my screen. Ah, no microphone. OK. Andrew's replied in the chat from the UK. No mic. Been getting into WordPress development over the last year. But many years of software experience before that. OK, thank you. H. Adam Lenz. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Adam. I am the lead web developer for UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina, America. Um, and uh, yeah, I, we we are working on a really really old code base for, with a lot of this type of updating things. And I just kind of wanted to get everyone's feel for it. Um, my experience with Gutenberg has been: if you don't do things in the right way, you're going to be doing them over. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Aki Hamano, tell us about yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, ah, I'm Aki from Japan, and I'm a freelancer, and I'm contributing, I'm contributing to Gutenberg, and especially I'm enjoying Ryan's Twitch, and unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not good at English, so please don't mind me. Thank you. Okay. Wow. What time is it in Japan? Must be the middle of the night there. Uh, 11 p.m. Yeah. He's right. a freelancer. He's used to being up ridiculous <laughs> weird hours, right? <laughs> and Udo, Udo, sorry. Um, Udo uh, said in the chat that he has no microphone. I think he's, a, he thinks, he thinks he's in transit. So, oh, um, okay. Yeah. So thank okay. you for joining, Udo. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And then Theo. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm a developer. Uh, I live in Greece. And I develop uh, websites, but also plugins for customers. Uh, I've made many plugins, and uh, I'm very interested in uh, using blogs, plugin blogs. Usually, I don't sell the plugins. They are only for my customers, so they have some decades of installations only. And... Uh, I'd like to make some things with blogs instead of short codes. I, I do many things with short codes. And uh, having the, the ability to build this in blog would be awesome. I've built some blogs, but uh, custom blogs for specific sites. And I'd like to know how to make this more universal. And I can plug it in in many sites uh, easily. Mm -hmm. Did so you say you in Greece? Small, uh, yes, in Greece. Greece. Okay. So we may see you at WordCamp Europe in Athens. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's great, great to meet any of you there. Are you involved you in the me... organizing team for that? Organizing no volunteer, volunteer team. You volunteer. I'm not, I'm not living in Athens. I live in Thessaloniki, so it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. But I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Fantastic. Thank you all. I think I've got everyone. Um, okay, let's go on to the discussion. I, you know, if anybody's got any particular questions, you know, uh, use the reactions in the toolbar to raise your hand or just post the question in the chat. Uh, like I said, this isn't a panel as such. It's just a discussion for us to all talk. So as I said, feel free to turn your cameras on. It'd be great to just uh, have a chat. Um, I guess what we could maybe talk about initially while people uh, come up with their questions is uh, maybe talk about the handbook, which is the official documentation 
for Gutenberg and the block editor. Um, maybe just talk about, you know, uh, how you found the, the handbook. Did you find it useful? Did you find it difficult to navigate and find the information you wanted? Did it go in at too high a level, not sufficiently introductory? Uh, yeah, I mean, what is good about the handbook? What is bad about the handbook? What could be improved? Any thoughts? Just to add to that, does everyone know what we're talking about and where to find that resource first? Did yeah, let me post the handbook? link again. I did post it yeah. earlier. No, well, I, I just mean in general, hmm. for developers trying to find docs, where do you do you go to the, are, like, are, one, are you aware that it, it, it exists because it's in a slightly different place than some other things? And two, is it a place that you go to, to, to get the information that you, that you want? I guess that's sort of, and that sort of dovetails with what, what Michael was saying about if you, if you use it, does it serve the, the needs? Um, I don't know, maybe put a plus one in the chat or something, or if anyone has any comments, jump on in. Or if you don't use the handbook, where do you go for documentation? Do you just look for online tutorials? I mean, I know Kinsta has some really excellent tutorials. Yeah, so yeah, it's a good point, Ryan. What, you know, what is your source of information when you're developing? As, as I say, the block developer handbook is the uh, is the official resource. So we'd like some feedback on what you think of it. Um, and yeah, let us know what other resources you use. You know, where you find if you find the block handbook deficient in any way, what is your alternatives? Can we jump in or? Yeah, or... please do. Okay. Please, like <laughs> okay. I said, it's a, it's a conversation, not a panel. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I think that the, so obviously I'm a developer advocate, so I'm coming from a bit of a different perspective. Um, I think the handbook is good and getting better. Um, one of the things that we hear a lot is somebody might re read the handbook and they for, take, for example, uh, the, the handbook page about global settings and styles, the theme.json spec, if you will. Uh, tons of great information in there, and that's like the source of truth. How to use theme.json in practical ways, that page really isn't for that. You know, it's really to tell you all the different pieces of theme.json, what each one does. And so, having more applicable tutorials around theme.json are really helpful. That's why I'm loving like the, the new developer, um, uh, sorry, I'm butchering the name, the developer. Dev blog? Dev oh, blog, exactly, yeah. yeah. Where it's taking the, basically the content in the docs and then applying them to like actual real world examples. Um, so I think that having both of those working in tandem is like a great thing. For me personally, I started building blocks like two and a half years ago when there really was very little information out there. I find that the Gutenberg plugin, uh, the Gutenberg project itself is like my go-to source. Like if I see something in Gutenberg that I like and want to incorporate into my own plugin, I just dive into Gutenberg and figure out how it was done. What are the components being used? Mm -hmm. um, that's a pretty big uh, thing to jump into, uh, but that's that's one of my biggest resources. In building. And I... I, I do the same, but I think that for those who maybe aren't that familiar with React or especially React right. at the Gutenberg level, that could be extremely daunting. I, I just remember my first forays into trying to contribute and just, I just remember being like, this is great. I'm going to go contribute. And then I'm like, oh my God, I don't understand a single thing I just looked at and then getting really discouraged. So yeah, I, that- Absolutely, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, but but I mean, it's telling if, if people are going to the source code to get their docs, then maybe- <laughs> the docs need to get a bit a bit more verbose. I, I I wanted to share this official re resource as well. Um, this is a it's called Storybook, Storybook JS, mm -hmm. but it's it's basically you can in, in interact with all the components that are in Gutenberg now and you can change state and you, you can do things like that. So you can get different sort of variations, change the props and see how they interact. Um, again, it's more of just like a, a tool to explore and see what is available in the various uh, packages in um, that, that ship with, uh, with with WordPress and Gutenberg. Yeah, which can be useful if you're not sure what component you need to do a particular 
Yeah, for sure. I just used thing, it in one know, of my you streams. You use a slider or a, yeah, or a number to, input control or. For sure. Yeah. To learn about the form token field, which is something that I am now officially obsessed with. And um, it, it's like a multi-select type ahead. Really cool. But there's a bunch of different sort of variations in there. So you can see how, how the different props or the different like sort of properties for the component affect how the component works and, th and things like that. Um, I, I have a question. How many people have not ever built a block and are struggling with like where to get started? Is there, a, is there like, is, have we all sort of tried? Um, yeah. And this isn't, this isn't to out anyone or make anyone feel um, embarrassed or anything, because that's the whole point of this, right? Is, is like, if, if, if that's where you're stumbling, that's absolutely, that's yeah. I mean, okay. it's, you know, cool. It's, uh, okay. I mean, it's true that the learning curve yeah. for, for block development can be quite steep and just getting started. You know, which is hence my question earlier, do, does the handbook go in at too high a level and is not sufficiently introductory? There is a course on learn.wordpress.org, which is an introductory step-by-step, -step, you know, uh, walk you through all the baby steps of building a block. Let me post a link to that. Let me just bring it up, bear with me. Um, there's also, well, Michael finds that there's also another tool that, um, uh, I personally love it's a scaffolding tool basically because for me personally when I when we were at 10 up or when I was at 10 up <laughs> there's not more than one of me we <laughs> when I was at 10 up we we kind of I was working there right when 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 uh, 5.0 was released and Gutenberg kind of came out and so one of the big stumbling blocks especially for larger agencies or people working with lots of blocks lots of times um, is how do you structure them what where does what goes where where do you keep your files what should be in different files and things like that and that that and so th this tool that I'm I'm about to link, which I'll link right now, is uh, it's the create block package. And basically it's a scaffolding tool that will build you out a working plugin with a single block pre-scaffolded and built and all the tools that you need to get the most basic block and it's working. And then you just go in and add your, sort of your flourishes, your the, the functionality that you want. And this is a great learning tool because it shows you sort of how things are like, you know, sort of a best practice around how structuring your blocks could work. Um, you can see how block.json, which is a huge part of building blocks, um, kind of it, uh, works with the block system, how the build process works, and it's all built for you. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to learn anything about Webpack. You don't have to learn anything about all this. You can just focus on like how are blocks built. And, and so it's a really great tool for that. It's very extendable as well. Um, you can create your own templates for it, which is sort of more of an uh, advanced topic. But if you want to structure things in a very certain way, you can build that out and tell this tool to use that template instead. Um, so it's a really great starting point. Now, the blocks that it will build you are very simple. It's literally just a, you know, a, piece, of, a piece of text that's output on the, on the front end and in the block editor. And it's very, very simple. So you can kind of build on that. Um, but that's a great tool to get started if, um, if you're looking for just like, where do I even begin? Yeah, totally, totally agree with that. And that is the create block tool is actually covered in the in that course that I've just yes. posted. Um, in fact, the project in the course is scaffolded with with create block. Um, and create block is great at building a standalone plug uh, plugin that implements a block. But the focus of this uh, session is about integrating a a block into your existing plugin that uses a short code and getting the same functionality as your short code, but in a block. Um, and in that set, for that, uh, create block will get you scaffolded. It takes an option, which is high, dash dash no plugin or, right. or something like that, I think. Yeah. And then it just creates the block implementation. Um, without the the plugin, the PHP code. I think there is a, still a PHP file, a render.php file included yep. if you there use is. that uh, that uh, switch to the uh, create block command. Um, but you still need to go through quite a few steps to actually integrate that into your existing plugin. Um, I mean, one of the things I found out, this is something that Ryan helped me with, that's something that caught me out was it you'd need to put it in a 
the folder that you put your your block code in has to have a specific name. Well, it doesn't have to. You can give it a different name, but then you have to change your config.json file to tell it where the uh, where the where your files are. Um, yes, I think it needs to be ah now for this project I'm looking at. I have actually changed it. Does it need to be SRC? Yes. Yeah, so by default, that so there's a lot there's a lot to unpack here. Um, so let me maybe just kind of give a bit of context and then we'll go back into it. So, so sorry for the, the tangent, but, but for those, especially those un, unfamiliar with sort of the, 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 the plumbing around how block building works, um, this might help. So um, the, the, the block, so uh, Gutenberg and the WordPress uh, uh, community uses a package called the scripts package and the scripts package handles all the build process. And it's very easy to use and it's very well set up and easily abstracted away and all that stuff. But, but there are some sort of like rules around uh, what it's expecting with your, the way the blocks are structured. So the first one is that all of your JavaScript code that is going to be compiled or transpiled uh, from sort of like ES6 and JSX. And if those things don't make any sense please drop a little, uh, just raise a hand or something and I'll go into what, what that means. But basically what it's going to do is transpile all that stuff from source into a build directory. And build directory is actually what gets loaded into your plugin or, and, and released. But um, the convention is that the, the, the folder name is SRC or source. Now you can change that, but the build or the, the scripts package expects that you will tell it where it's going to be. And you, you can do that with a flag in your commands. And if none of this makes sense to anyone, please let me know and I'll go into it a bit uh, more detail. But um, that's what Michael's saying. So it, it, the scripts package is great and it's really configurable, um, but you just have to sort of know what, what to tell it so it knows where to find blocks and do all those things. So, um, yes, so yes. Short answer is yes, source. Long answer is you can make it whatever you want as long as you tell it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the project I just looked at that I've been working on, I had done the, I had done that. I'd told it where to look and given it my own mm -hmm. uh, folder name, which is why I couldn't remember exactly what it, but yes, SRC or source is the, uh, is, it's probably the easiest way to do it when you want to integrate uh, mm -hmm. a block into an existing package, into an existing plugin. Yeah. So you would use, as Ryan says, you use um the create block package with that switch, which is hyphen hyphen no plugin, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So what that and then does it just is... generates the, the the block files, and you put then put those into an SRC directory in your existing plugin that right. implements a short code or widget or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you, and then the hard part bit starts. You actually start coding up your block to mm -hmm. do the same thing as the. Uh, as the short code does, except you need to do it twice. You need to do it once for the front end and once for the editor. And for the front end, you can either use a function um, and a PHP function and pass things like attributes and content to it. Or I think now you can get, there's a render.php file which automatically runs and automatically gets the attributes and content yeah. and so on, and you can just access it. Yeah. Uh, behind the scenes, it's basically, it's it's built, it's, it's doing the same thing sort of as, as if you're familiar with get template part, how it works in sort of like classic theming. Um, it You tell it the file and it pulls the file in. Um, it's sort of doing the same thing. So a render.php file is... Um, <clears throat> The, where your PHP goes. And so if you have short code, because like in your short code, you've got the function that renders your short code, you can just put that, co that code in your render.php and that'll, that'll, that'll fire um, or that'll run. Um, and then the hard yeah, part- you, you just need to edit it if you need to access attributes. Yes. So yeah. does anyone know what, what, what we were talking about when we talk about at, like block attributes and attributes in general? Um, if it, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume silence means yes. <laughs> so if not, please uh, put like a thumbs down or some kind of emoji or or something because because we can definitely explain that. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, the hard part will be um, well not the hard part but the work like you've already done your PHP's part you you've you've already got your sort of your short code 
uh, rendering function that, that you built with your short code, um, you, what you'll need to do is on in the editor side, in the JavaScript side, you'll need to change that from um, like from sort of the short code syntax, which is supported still um, in a block into adding each one of those items that you pass to your, your short code as, as what's called an attribute. So you're saving that with your block. And that's that's really the hard part. And it just becomes a series of, of controls, which um, we, there are lots of types. Um, you know, it's usually all strings anyways. So your you know, a bunch of text fields would probably be a good a good place to start. Yeah. And then yeah. I suppose what we should explain here is that what we're describing is what's called a dynamic block. Correct. With the um with the the code re the front end code rendered in PHP, which is usually pulling stuff from the database with a WP query or something. And then with the on the uh, in the editor, you would normally, yeah, you create JavaScript in an edit.js file. Um, and yeah, I mean, so and if your front end uh, PHP is getting stuff from the database with a WP query, you're going to have to do the same if you want to get if you want the users to have that WYSIWYG experience of seeing the same thing in the editor as in the front end, you, you'll have to use the uh, the word the Gutenberg or block editor data package to get your data into the editor mm -hmm. as well. And it's worth pointing out that there is duplication of code because if you want to keep retain your short code functionality uh, for the legacy editor, for example, um, and you're going to have your render.php uh, for the block version, Th those bits of code are virtually identical, um, you know, except, you know, you, the, the block version will access attributes and so on. Um, whereas the, uh, the short code will, you know, might be getting post meta or something to, uh, to configure um, settings within the, the short code um so yeah so there is duplication of code which isn't isn't very uh uh what what, what what's the term dry not very dry as in don't repeat yourself yeah um does anyone have any specific questions about the stuff that they're working on like it's going to be hard for, you know, for us to, you know, dive into the code directly, but any sort of like, I tried to do this and it didn't work, or, or I tried to do this and it, and, or, or whatever, like it, any questions are welcome, obviously, but, um, you know, I, I, I feel like we're doing a lot of talking and which is great, but um, we want to make sure that you guys get some value out of this as well, yeah. beyond just sort of us throwing names and Nick's got some. Yeah, I have a quick suggestion. So uh, if you have a plugin that's rendering a short code or has a short code, Usually, there's an abstraction there, right? What the user is seeing in the editor is just a short code, and then on the front end is could be anything, could be a fancy graphic, could be could be something really complicated. In the work that I've done in my own personal stuff of converting short codes into blocks, I would strongly suggest that you simply you ignore the kind of what you see is what you get in the editor because if you have like a really complicated short code that's rendering something sophisticated on the front end, trying to replicate that in the editor, you might start pulling your hair out, <laughs> you know. So especially if you're new to this, so I would suggest that when you're going this process, start with create block, create a dynamic block, get your short code PHP. Convert it into the render uh, PHP function in um, the create block setup. And then for the editor, just worry about adding in the fields that the short code needs to function. Um, and I've even done this, this is kind of embarrassing, but like for my short, for my block that was once a short code, I just have a little placeholder that says like, the name of the block or whatever. So it sits there and when you click on it, then you can edit the fields. But I just don't even worry about the aesthetics in the editor, at least while I'm trying to get it working. Um, obviously, as you become more comfortable and you start uh, understanding how to interact with data in the in the editor and all sorts of stuff, then you can actually build, you know, the real thing in the editor. But I would just don't get hung up on that. <laughs> just focus on getting yeah. uh, the block working. 
I agree hundred percent. That's a great, mm. and especially those folks that um, I forget who, who was saying it, I think it, um, about like, I want to do this, but I also, I, I think it was you, Stuart. Um, like I want to learn this, but I also got bills to pay and clients that won't have timelines. And that's, that's a huge, a huge factor um, is like, I can do this, but I don't have a thousand hours to learn all, all this stuff, right? My client has deadlines, so I need to get this out. So, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with a tiered approach, like, like what Nick's saying, right? So just get those, just get those, those basic text fields in. If you want to get super tricksy, you could, I wouldn't recommend it doing it too much, but you could use the server side render component to kind of mm. render what, so that's a, that's a component that kind of takes whatever the front end is doing and puts it into the back end. Um, it's okay. I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't, it's, it's certainly not a, it's not a magic wand. Um, you can run into some issues if you have too many blocks doing all, all, all that, but, um, but yeah, sort of like, you know, it's a, there's a big learning curve in general. So take your time, just, just get it working and then add, add the flourishes later. So I, I just basically copied whatever Nick said. So he's a smart dude. I like to do that. It, it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's better than just someone trying to plug in a short code into the editor, right? So you've made mm -hmm. pro positive progress. And then in future editions, you can change it uh, in the futures. Absolutely. Absolutely. I th if I may, um, yeah, there's actually a dearth of information that you guys have created as well out there. And it's uh, some really powerful videos as well. That, you know, obviously for the visual learners in the room, but, um, and I have them all, book I have them all bookmarked, uh, categorized very tidily, but uh, it's just actually, I need to get to them. I'm probably a little early for this. This um, I'm more. I'm going to have to be more of a listener here. But uh, as I slowly pursue the build out of of a block, obviously uh, I'll I'll be able to introduce and have some more input. But uh, yeah, there's some very good information available already. I've seen. Um, well, obviously Nick's put a lot together, and, and Ryan's done some uh, some interesting stuff as well. I forget the name of the, the what we're we using. We're we using an editor that you set up and. Um, wasn't uh it was an online editor and uh you you kind of set up the building out of a block there and i kind of attended all those but i've um i've, I've got to go back and review them all that was ryan i believe um i don't know if you replit was it was it replit did you build something oh, replit. Replit? yeah yep yep yeah. yep I've got so replit, you know uh, that stuff was very helpful <laughs> and um i just need to uh to review that and then and nick's done a lot of re video recordings as well so it's all there as, as i say it's a time thing so i'm, I'm looking forward to um um hopefully just bring in some more value to the table in terms of just sitting here and taking it all in but uh that's where i'm at the moment thank you do, do you all have any examples of plugins that use short code and block editor at the same time um i will shortly i'm rebuilding one of my short code plugins at yeah, the moment i've, I've got a video I've got a video on, on my channel where I actually did, I, I built a plugin that was a short code and then the stream was converting it to a, to, mm. um, to a, a block. Let me dig that up. Um, it's not, I mean, it's, it's say, I, I think it might be a, a, a meme generator or something ridiculous like that. So it's certainly not a production level thing, but the concept is there. Um, let me just track that down. And uh, Michael, you're working on a, you're working on this now. Right? I'm currently working on it. I'm kind of uh, just starting out on doing this. You know, I've built blocks before, but this is my first time doing what we're talking about, converting an existing plugin and uh, that has a short code. It's a plugin that I've got up in the uh, the plugin directory. Um, I've got quite a few users, so it's something I need to get right. Um, to implement the block thing. So I haven't uploaded the blocks version. I'm still working on it. It's the first time I'm doing it. Um, so learning as I go. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, there's still hundreds of thousands or millions of people still using the classic, the classic approach. So yeah, it's more code in the plugin, but being able to offer both approaches that generate the same result, I think is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Still supporting both, both people, both folks. Yeah, and that's something to to consider as well. If you have a plugin that's out, that's been released and you have you know any number of users on there, all of a sudden just kind of like you know stopping them, like you do have a backwards. So there's a sort of an onus on on the developer to kind of maintain some semblance of backwards compatibility. And the great thing about it is you can just use the short code or you can use the block version, um, and and both either in 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 the block editor, but also but you still have that classic editor support. 
I realized that this, the thing that, that I just linked has absolutely no channel, like no time markers. So huh. have fun watching for an hour and a half. Uh, just uh, do it on, on, on 1.5 speed, please. No one wants, no one needs to listen to me talk for an hour and a half. I just want to revisit something that Nick said earlier about don't, it, it was good advice, you know, about don't worry too much about how it renders in the editor, you know, which is great when you get started. Um, but I think it does matter how it looks in the editor that ultimately you should put effort into making it look to give the user that WYSIWYG experience and what they see in the editor is what they see in the front end, because that's the whole philosophy underlying the block editor anyway. And, and if you don't make that effort to, to have it, you know, rendering nicely in the editor, then you might as well not bother and just keep your short code and your user use the short code block, which looks very clunky. So it's worth making the effort, I think, to make it look nice in the editor ultimately but you know nick's advice is still good when you're starting out you know it's the front end yeah. that matters i, I want to caveat that slightly so a good example is i created a short code i had a short code that printed out the current date or whatever and so in the editor instead of worrying i mean it's not that hard but instead of worrying about like pulling the current date and then getting the current date, uh, the date uh, format that your WordPress site set up for. I just have like a simple like date. So it looks fine. Like it looks mm -hmm. like a date in the interface or yes. I think it says like current date. So it's like, you're kind of shortcutting there, but you're, you're hundred percent. If you can get to the point where it's hundred one to one, then that's the best scenario for yeah. them. So I, I really like your point there, Nick, because depending on what the block is doing, you may not be able to get a one-to-one. -one. Like, let's say that your short code renders a calendar with massive, you know, all sorts of JavaScript fu uh, functionality and date picking and all this stuff, like a really big verbose thing that might be just like hours just to implement it so you can see it. So, I mean, you could just do a placeholder that's just a graphic of a calendar that would sort of, that that shows you the, like, and, and this isn't meant to be like like a trick, but it's sort of like, you still get the that that WYSIWYG like oh so that's what the calendar will look like in place with content above it and below it. It's not a functional interactive calendar because you know that's might just mm. be too much. But there's there's so there's like middle ground between like yeah. just fields and you know full one to one yeah. matching. And it still and, looks a bit better than using the short code block and just putting yeah, your short code into yeah. the short code and block. Obviously, at the end of the day. If this is a hobby project and you have nothing but time, then I would absolutely recommend, you know, getting into the the the, the depths of it and trying to get that. But if you're being, you know, if you're on a short timeline and, and, you know, your client's okay with not that sort of thing, I mean, that's obviously a huge barrier is that the time it takes to learn some of these things, especially for people who like maybe have never done any JavaScript or very little and no React and, you know, dealing with... Build processes. There's a big, there's a big learning curve there, and clients don't want to pay you to learn. I get it. Okay, somebody. Sorry, what were you talking there? Yeah, somebody's got some sound playing. So could we? Somebody's asking us to mute Will. So I'm I think oh, he's he's muted there now. Yeah, I've just done that. Um. Yes. Yeah. Personally, I am making the effort to get my the, the project I'm currently working on to get my uh, uh, block to look exactly like it does in the front uh, that the short code version does in the editor, because mine pulls in a uh, a custom post type mm -hmm. in, and what I ultimately want to do is um, get people to be able to add new uh posts in that in that custom post type from within the editor cool and i and it all and i also have some javascript because there's a, certain, a small amount of interactivity in the front end and i'd like to be able to duplicate that in the editor but uh, i haven't managed that bit yet one of the other cool things to to note is that you might have a short code that does something maybe it's like dynamic text or something like that and you might be actually able to add more functionality to your short code, what was a short code in block form. And that's by using block supports. So for example, if you had a short code using my date example that just printed a date, 
Well, you can do that in a block and then also add the block supports for typography and color and background. And all of a sudden you took your shortcode, not only did you make it a block, but you also made it a lot more customizable yep. just and by specifying that in block.json. Um, and you also have access to like block variations and the global stuff that's that's coming in, um, in I think is 15.0 with sort of the global, being able yep. to, to make global changes to your site that affect all of your blocks. Like you get all of that by moving. I mean, I, th I think now we're just sort of advocating for the block editor, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, but there is a lot like of easy functionality to add. Like it's so easy to say, okay, this block that I just built outputs text and I want to change the text color. So you just li literally li add one line to your block.json file. And now you've got a color picker that inherits all, all, all the default colors possibly, and all the colors defined will buy whatever theme you're, you're using. It's simple, easy. And you don't have to write any extra code other than like color is like whatever a true or whatever the object is that you're wanting. Like it's very, very, very simple, which is awesome. Okay, we're coming up to the last few minutes. So we'll just open the floor up to any questions. If anybody has anything that they want to ask or anything they want to say, relate their experience, any problems they've encountered just in the last few minutes. I'd also recommend in these last few minutes, if you want to save the chat, because there's a whole lot of links in there. So just take a moment to save the chat if you want to retain those links. So any last questions or any points anybody wants to make? Um, just I'm available and Michael, I'm sure is available as well. I shouldn't speak for him, but I mean, if anyone has any questions that they just want to ask one-on-one, -on -one, um, feel free. I, you can, I'm, I'm Ryan Welcher or Welcher or Welcher Ryan, depending on, on, on the thing. I'm in WordPress Slack. You can DM me, DM me on Twitter, uh, YouTube, fire comments, anything. I, I mean, I think we're like, I'm more than happy to dive into some code or just like talk through something. Um, I know sometimes in these public forums, it's a little bit uncomfortable asking sort of uh, questions, but feel free um, to reach out to myself and I'm, Michael, I shouldn't speak for you, but- uh, No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, uh, I'm available yeah, on, on be Slack, very happy to help. on the Making WordPress Slack or mm -hmm. on Twitter. I'm Emburridge in most places. Yeah, great. And uh, yeah. Okay, so- if there's nothing else, let's um let's wrap things up. Just want to remind everything everyone that WordPress is open source. Anyone can contribute. So if you find any gaps in the handbook and you have overcome a problem and you think, well, this would be good to put in the handbook, you can contribute um pages or edit you even edit pages in the handbook. The handbook is actually just a directory in the Gutenberg repo. There's a docs directory. And the handbook is built from the docs directory in the Gutenberg repo. So if you want to make an edit to the handbook, you just submit a PR to the uh, in the Gutenberg repo with your edits to whatever file it is in the docs directory. It's um, is that simple to to make your own contributions to the handbook, and they'll always be welcome. And again, if anyone has is uncomfortable setting that up or has never done that before reach out we're more than happy to sort of help there's uh there's some there's uh, notes in the handbook itself on how on how to contribute and you know how to set things up it's basically if you're comfortable working with git and, and github that's all it is it's just a pull request i mean um but that can be daunting what do i label it how do i tag it whatever so i mean uh, if anyone has prs uh, you know you can tag me on it or michael yeah and we'd be happy to review it and add some you know if there's anything that needs to be added yeah, and if you're not uh, sure about labeling well. and thing, there is a documentation label that you can add to your uh, PR. And if you just look for the doc for PRs with the documentation label in the in the repository, you can see how other people have done it. If you're not sure, okay. Thank you very much all for joining. Just want to remind everyone that the next one is scheduled for February the twenty seventh. Ryan is going to be a uh, on that one, I won't be this one. The, the one on the 27th 
is the time it's scheduled for the Americas uh, time zone. Um, so I think it's a little bit late in the afternoon for me, but Ryan's going to be co-hosting it with Justin Tadlock, I believe. Yep, that's correct. Justin, uh, so if that suits your time zone, by all means, uh, join that. So thank you very much for joining this, uh, especially those people coming from America, where it's uh, still quite early, I think. Uh, this was scheduled for the EMEA uh, time zones. And especially thanks to um, Aki in Japan, for, for whom it's the middle of the night. So, yeah, thank you very much. Um, and, yeah. Join us in uh, February the 27th for the next one. Thank you very okay. much. Bye-bye. Thanks, okay. everyone. Bye-bye, really everyone. Coming. Bye. Thank you.